Hello there, monsters and men, ladies and people, and welcome to Recharging. About half a year ago, I read an article about the largest solar farm outside of China. Well, at least back then. And actually, it is right there on that lake behind me. I'm in the Netherlands, near Zwolle. And behind me is an artificial lake where they dig up sand for all kinds of uses. And on that lake are floating 73,000 solar panels uh, from a German energy company called Bewa and they produce 23 megawatts of energy. 23 megawatts, I mean, that's quite a lot. It didn't really go how I wanted to go because I wanted to be closer to the solar panels. I wanted to be near the lake so you could actually see them. But unfortunately, it's all private property, so I cannot get there. This is the closest that I can get without getting a fine. This is going to be a talky video. So if you minimize this, I don't blame you. But if you want to keep looking at me, I won't blame you either. But let's first talk about the figures because in 2014, the whole world produced 10 megawatts on, uh, with floating solar panels, 10 megawatts. Keep in mind, this behind me already produced 23 megawatts. So that's more than double that. But at the end of 2018, so only four years, the world already produced 1.3 gigawatts of energy with floating solar panels. Especially in Asia, this is really, really huge. Um, and why especially in Asia? Well, for example, in China, they are working, well, it is already the largest solar farm. And at the end of 2019, that solar farm produced 120 megawatts of energy floating of floating solar. And the end goal is 200 megawatts of floating solar panels. 200 megawatts, 23 megawatts, 73,000 panels, uh, 200 megawatts. Can you imagine? 600,000 panels mean the size of it. I cannot imagine, it's huge, but this is a rising technology. So when I was reading that article, I thought to myself, what are the benefits of this? Why would you do this? Because if there weren't any benefits, they wouldn't do this. So there must be benefits. So I did some research finally, after half a year, and I want to share that with you. So let's first start with the benefits. And the first one is actually very simple if you think about it. It saves valuable space on land. There's a little fly in my eye <laughs> and that rhymes. <laughs> but again, there um, it saves valuable space on land because well, the population of the world is still rising. So we need that space for um, buildings, for agriculture, and maybe save a little bit space for nature, for, for the nature. That would be nice to have some national parks and stuff. But yeah, we need that. And well, there's plenty of space on water, so we can just put them there. So that one is very simple. And the second, since they are floating on water, the installation is easier. And that is because, well, um, the installation is more compact. And I can imagine since they float on water, they don't need any foundation, so they put them together in the factory or partially they ship them out somewhere and they do the finish, do the final assembly and that's it. And also the decommissioning is a lot simpler and that is because, well, there's no foundation or anything that they are sitting on so that they can be decom decommissioned without leaving any trail. So the third benefit, um, maybe this is a third and fourth, but I did them under one thing. And that is, well, it saves water. And it saves water by, um, well, by the following way. It will, the water in the pond or in the lake or wherever you put them will evaporate less because, well, the solar panels are covering the water. Um, because of that, um, less sun hits the water. And so the water will evaporate less. Actually, the evaporation will can be reduced by 70 percent by putting solar panels on top of the water and this is especially useful in very dry areas where they have these ponds for drinking water and you want to save as much as possible uh, for people to drink to maybe um, do it for the crops whatever but you want to save as much water as possible and again by doing this you can save 70 percent of evaporation and also the thing i was really surprised with is that it actually improves the water quality. I didn't, <laughs> again, it was the, the thing I was most surprised with. And it does that by, well, again, the sun is not hitting as much, uh, 
the sun is not hitting the water as much as without solar panels. And because of that, you actually reduce the, the, al the algae blooms that will be created, is that the right word? Created in the water. And those algae blooms are actually um, dangerous for humans and for animals if you drink them. So again, having less sunlight hitting the water will actually reduce the creation of those algae blooms. The fourth, well, the solar panels are on water, so that means they have a natural cooling. Um, the water that will evaporate will cool the solar panels, and also the water itself will cool the solar panels. And in general, when a solar panel heats up, uh, the efficiency will go down. So the solar panels are cooler when they are on water, so that means they are more efficient. They can actually be 10% more efficient by only having them on water instead of somewhere on land. 10%, that is quite a lot. And also the components of the solar panel um, are cooler, so that means there's less stress on the components, so that means uh, they have a longer lifespan. So it's also more durable. And the fifth one is actually a, the, it's easier on a floating solar panel farm to install a, a solar tracking system. So that means the solar panel will track the sun and by doing that, they, will, they can actually produce 15 to 25% more energy. <laughs> and that is huge. And the cost of putting a tracking system on a floating solar panel is relatively uh, low compared to the cost of actually creating a floating solar panel farm. So yeah, that is all great. But of course, it's not all sunny. There are also downsides to this, to this technology. The technology is relatively new, so... What happens with new technologies is relatively expensive. Well, it is expensive to put a floating, floating solar panel down. Uh, of course, again, the technology is new. The, the technology will adv advance and mature, so the cost will go down. But right now, it is quite expensive compared to a solar panel on land to put them on water. And also the second downside, um, they cannot be installed at sea yet. The conditions at sea are just too rough, uh, too unpredictable yet for the solar panels. But keep, keep in mind that uh, actually the Netherlands is, doing a, is going to do an experiment with a square foot solar panel farm at the North Sea. So I have no doubt that the technology will come, that eventually we see these solar panels um, uh, together with the wind turbines at sea. I have no doubt about it, but currently it is just not possible. But overall, I think this is great. I think this is a great technology to help us to that 100% of renewable energies that we need so much to reduce the carbon emissions. And yeah, keep on going, keep on going. So yeah, that is it for now. Um, I hope you like this. And if you do, please subscribe because more of these things will come in the future. Again, it was a talky video, but I hope you found it interesting. And if you do, as I said it, please give a like and subscribe. Uh, if you did not, well, please leave a comment below to see what I can improve because I want to improve. I want everyone to enjoy this. And then I would like to say now as always, well, thank you a lot for watching and to be continued.